One more spot to be decided between the two seeds, the Kentucky Wildcats, champs of the SEC as they take on the surging Boilermakers of Purdue. And one of these teams will be going to the national semifinals for the very first time, and they'll take on the Washington Huskies on Thursday night. Paul Sunderland back with you in Southern California. Thrilled to have my partner once again, Salima Rockwell, in Austin, Texas. Three-time All-American at Penn State. We've had three amazing matches. We've got 4,000 fans. Talk to us about the atmosphere, the pressure on the players, what we saw from Wisconsin and Florida, and what we can expect going forward. More of the same, I would imagine. Well, I tell you, there's nothing like it. Nothing like these moments leading up to the national championship. Everyone's battling and trying to get to that semifinal match. So the pressure is on. And who can stay loose? Who can be relaxed right. and just finish plays? And we're going to see a lot of the same team things tonight with Kentucky and Purdue. I'm ex expecting a battle just like earlier. Enjoy the moment, even though there is so very much on the line. The top offensive team in the entire country is out of Lexington, Kentucky. Ali Stumler and Avery Skinner are two of the biggest components, but this is a loaded offense, as you know, Selena. I tell you, they have so many weapons, but you got to start with their outside hitters and Avery Skinner and Ali Stumler, both of them playing six rotations, both of them able to score out of the front row and the back row, and Kentucky is going to need them in a major way tonight. And no question, Purdue has got lots of weapons, and Caitlin Newton carries a huge role, and she's backed up by Grace Cleveland as well. She really does play a huge role as an outside, getting a ton of swings, and of course, Grace Cleveland, their big right side attacker that you're gonna hear her name over and over again tonight. Big, tall order for both of them playing against Kentucky. Well, keep track of these numbers. Caitlin Newton, four kills. You see Grace Cleveland, what she brings. Ali Stumler as well, one of the best all-around players in all of college volleyball, and Avery Skinner as well. Joining us, of course, on the sideline, the one and only Holly Rowe. Got a very special story about how close-knit. There are some interconnections in this particular matchup. That's right. The heart of tonight's story all centers around Muncie, Indiana. It's a very complicated story, but stick with me on this. Craig Skinner, the head coach at Kentucky, played college volleyball for Ball State. His teammate on that squad was John Shondell, the assistant coach for Purdue. Not only that, but Dave Shondell, the head coach for Purdue Volleyball, also played at Ball State about a decade earlier. All of them played for Dave's father, Don Shondell, who is a volleyball legend in America, the second all-time leading wins leader in men's volleyball. So these people know each other well. Muncie and Andy has got to be very proud right now of all of these people, and uh, we'll see how they put their friendship aside right now. And Kelly Sheffield of Wisconsin was also in that mix. It is indeed a very small world as we are underway. One more spot to fill out the bracket in the national semifinals on Thursday night. And thank you very much. Right on cue, Avery Skinner, six foot one senior out of Katy, Texas, wearing number four in white with the opening kill. Madison Lilly, first team all SEC, player of the year and setter of the year in the conference. Cleveland opening block. Skinner on the outside, also getting some help immediately from Elise Getzinger. Well, and that's a big block on that side of the court, and it's a nice matchup for Kentucky right now. That's Grace Cleveland over there trying to hit on the right side, so we'll see how they can fare against one another. That's yeah, a nice response. Keys for Purdue early on. Are we going to, everybody's been talking about Purdue. Yes, under the radar a little bit, as Katie George said in the studio. But this is a team that's really made its mark in the latter stages of the Big Ten. We're going to really find out about Purdue today against a team like the number two seed from Kentucky. Well, and there's so much that they offer. They have balance across the net. They have fantastic defensive players. And I tell you, their ball control, wait till you see it, is, is unbelievable. So I think they're, they're up for the task. And it, this is going to be a battle tonight. Jenna Otek flying around in the gold jersey, the defensive player of the year, wearing number 19 on Purdue's side already having an impact. There is Reagan Rutherford, six-foot freshman out of Missouri City, Texas, wearing number 10, Craig Skinner. Excuse me, and Dave Shondell will use a number of subs. Dave Shondell for Purdue getting the job done with Marissa Horning, who was uh, the Libero last year, and now Otek has taken over that spot. Ball set way too tight. A rare setting mistake that time for Madison Lilly. 
Yeah, that ball just ended up tight drifting to the net, but I tell you, I like the job that Purdue does, just kind of surrounding the ball, taking care of it. Madison Lilly will find her her stride here and set some, some clean balls off the net. Grace Cleveland has had a big year in the country's be best conference in the Big Ten. Nice dig, the dig and the kill. Hang in and take a shot out of the middle back. And even the score at three apiece. You gotta love that, that is an actual kill in the, in the books. Third meeting all time in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky and Purdue, one win apiece. Their last meeting was in the second round in 2018. And that was won by Kentucky. I want to tell you a really nice job right now by Elise Getzinger starting off with some good movement laterally with the block and then a big kill just kind of hanging that ball up there for her. let her go get it part of one of the number one the, the number one recruiting class in 2019 here's Gabby Curry three times Libro of the year in the SEC and this is that one just a little bit long Kentucky 21 and one on the year their only loss was to Florida Purdue 15 and 6 on the season of course playing out of the Big Ten that is a tough challenge but they finished off they they finished pretty strong they did drop a match to Illinois but prior to that they won two against a very good Ohio State team in Columbus they did Purdue's playing has been playing so well like you said that tough loss against Illinois but they moved past it and they're still playing at a very high level number 17 in white Stumler who we featured right before first serve First team all SEC misses that high hard good swing, but just a little bit long. Very easy serve one on one nice dig again. Purdue pretty good defensive team blocking hanging in. And that's out of bounds again. That missed down the sideline by the younger sister of Avery Skinner. That is Maddie Skinner. Looks like Purdue's taking away some of that cross court, forcing her to hit that ball down the line a little bit, and this is just why. She has the ability to hit it, see if she can consistently hit it. There is Newton, carries such a heavy load, hits so many tough balls throughout the course of a match, and that's gonna be a center line violation. Pretty rocky start for the number two seeds. Craig Skinner patrolling the sideline. He has done a wonderful job. The winningest coach in Kentucky volleyball history now in his 16th year. He was voted it again, so now four times the SEC Coach of the Year, 16 straight NCAA tournament wins. 2019, they lost to Washington. And look at that, the Huskies back in the national semifinals lost to the Huskies in 2019. Stumler, high, hard swing. Oteg is there, the Libero. Chance in transition through the block. Look at Curry sprawling low. Stumler again. Otek with a good read, dug that right on cue, and then a very aggressive play by the 5'10 redshirt junior senior setter Haley Bush wearing number two. Good idea, Salima, but ran out of real estate. I love that idea, but Otek laying out for that first ball, and, and Bush knows, hey, that, that's available, that's there on that side of the court, and just misses a little bit wide. We talked about Kentucky being the number one offense in the country. Not so far in this opening set. They hit 364 on the season. I'll give you their early numbers. It's a very small sample size, but you don't see it very often. Nice play by Stumler and Curry. Azani Teeler at five foot ten, block in the middle now. Newton is dug. Teeler is rejected. What a nice job by Purdue just being in front of her face. I'm not sure if that ball actually cleared the net, but they're there and knowing that in transition, there's an opportunity for, for Kentucky to set Teeler in front or even moving her around a little bit. Keep an eye on Teeler and where she goes as a middle. Tough serve handled nicely. Stumbler again and puts an end to that run. But look at this. Before that kill by Stumler, Kentucky was two of 16 with four errors, hitting negative 125. Their season average is a plus 364. Well, and it's a nice job by Purdue serving. You saw a couple of short serves, getting on Maddie Skinner a little bit, getting them disrupting their offense. So real strategic with what they're doing so far is Purdue. 
What a dig by Curry. Had fantastic libero play, Lauren Barnes and Ellie McKissick for Florida and Wisconsin, respectively. Dug again by Gabby Curry, but Kate Newton gets credit for the kill, wearing number four in black out of the back row. Tell you, she is going to be a huge factor for them. They can use her in system, out of system to clean stuff up or when they need a kill. Caitlin Newton, such a smart player. And takes, as uh, Dave Shondell told us earlier today during our conversation, that was uh, a mess that time on the outside by Avery Skinner. But Caitlin Newton, she's hitting 174. And, and most times you'd sort of scratch your head on that one a little bit, but. Dave Shondell was telling us that all season long, she has taken virtually all of our very, very tough swings. Uh, Zani Teeler is roofed on the outside. Maddie Chin, 6'2", sophomore out of Oakland Township, Michigan. And what a start for Purdue. Could we have another upset brewing? Well, Purdue certainly thinks so. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals beginning Thursday, April 22nd at 7 Eastern time on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 championships. Back with Salima Rockwell just underway and Azani Teeler, who was basically perfect in their win over Western Kentucky yesterday, 8 of 9. Teeler, 5'10", sophomore out of Grand Prairie, Texas. Well, and we talked about moving her around a little bit and how Craig Skinner is just getting the most out of her. And you're not going to see her hit traditionally quick balls in the middle. Look for her to hit high on the pins as well. Chase by Otek. Good hustle by Purdue to keep the ball alive, trying to continue this solid start. Kill off the left side by Avery Skinner. And I love that defensive effort. You'll see them just flying into into the stands there, into the table, Otek making the play. That's why she's one of the best liberos, liberos in the country. Shank pass, Bush tries to get to it and quickly coming out of the timeout. Back-to-back -back points. Kentucky got to this round, the regional final. They had a bye in the opening round with his 48 team bracket, beat UNLV 3-0, and then beat a very, very good Western Kentucky team out of Conference USA. Beat them handily yesterday. Kentucky looked, <laughs> looked almost perfect yesterday, and Teeler almost was. Again, eight for nine. Cleveland is slowed down, but a little pinball wizardry that time by Cleveland and her teammates and they're able to get the fortunate score and continue to lead now by 3, 12 to 9. Well, that's what Purdue just needs to stay with it, be patient, handle the ball, control it, cover your hitters when the opportunity is there, and, and just stay in the play. Easy serve to Curry, and that ball missed out of bounds. How many hitting errors already? We've had a couple of balls hit out of bounds. That's another, that's seven hitting errors for the country's most efficient team, wearing white, the two seed, the Kentucky Wildcats off to a rocky start. Nice dig by Bush on the slide. Getzinger able to put that ball away. A couple of very easy serves. Purdue better pick that up a little bit. Curry's gonna, Curry's gonna deal with that easily. Yeah, I like Getzinger going back to Getzinger and she she can get on this ball, move it around in different areas of the court as well on that slide. Another, another fantastic freshman and there are so many, not only in this tournament, but around the country. And we've talked about this so many times. I, I just, it, it's so unbelievable the level of volleyball and how, how that's grown and, and these young players coming and making an impact, an immediate impact. Shank pass, and that's not going to be tracked down by Madison Lilly, who is a phenomenal athlete. If she can't get to that, virtually nobody can, and it's a 15 to 10 advantage. Serving phase certainly going the way of Otec and Purdue. And a block was it's out of bounds off the edge of the block. We're seeing short serves. What does that accomplish from Purdue? They used it against Oregon, a really good team that they beat 3-1 yesterday. 
Well, there's a few things, and it depends on what side of the court. So you want to serve on that right side of the court. Maybe get Avery Skinner out of it in that rotation. Serve her short. Then you can kind of commit or shade a little bit on the other on the other hitters as a blocking. The serve and the block is always working in tandem. So it really depends on what they're trying to execute, but that's what it looked like in that rotation. Free ball and easily handled that time by Madison Lilly out to Stumler. We're in number 17 in white. Outstanding 6-1 junior, all SEC. She was an SEC freshman of the year, second team All-American. She's had a marvelous career already out of Floyd's Knob, Indiana. Nice combination. That's a good looking play and beautiful execution by the Boilermakers. I tell you, I like when they just run Cleveland up, up the middle and they, there's so many options right now and if they're passing well, they, they're gonna have some one-on-one -on -one opportunities that ball not being super high to any person on the court. Perfect pass again. Stumbler, nice dig in the backcourt by Horning. And not only in, but also high and flat. And one of the really difficult swings taken by number four, Newton. And we talk about Horning, too, holding it down in the back row, digging a big ball there. And Newton just getting the corner with with the hands as well hitting high flat and deep Otech again Gabby Curry no trouble there Stumbler going high flat Horning the former libero playing really good defense as does Purdue really good in blocking defense Curry all over that three times the defensive player of the year long rally first really good exchange between these two teams Kentucky the number two seed Purdue the number seven seed put to the floor by Maddie Skinner nice job by Skinner finishing that play like you said Gabby Curry just reading it understanding where the ball's going and Skinner they're gonna need her to have a big match they're counting on her a lot she's come through in a major way for Kentucky so far this year. They're gonna need her to do that again tonight. Good save by Bush. Stumbler again, and that ball cannot be picked up in the back court. Marissa Horning going after that one. Stumbler's gotten a lot of attempts already, and she's sort of settling things down. Stumbler's already taken 13 swings, and it's 17-14. Good thing they got a couple of days off. <laughs> and, oh, right on the end line. We might have our first challenge. Again, you can challenge in and out, ball off a player, either at the net in the back court. And we are not gonna have it. Well, we might, we got a timeout instead. So we'll sort things out. I don't think we're gonna have a challenge as yet. Purdue calling the timeout, leading 17-15. They led by as many as five. And I won't say they gave up an ace because that ball was served perfectly right on the end line. Craig Skinner, I mentioned once again, the job he has done at Kentucky, making this not only a strong team in the SEC, they won their fourth straight SEC championship, but their 22nd tournament appearance in their, and their 16th straight. How many years has Craig Skinner been there? Well, you can see on his resume, he's done a magnificent job building this program now into a national championship contender. Let's go down to Holly for more on this outstanding coach. Well, Craig Skinner has collected one of the best recruiting classes he's had in several years, and some of the key pieces of this one, Avery Skinner, who visited for several top schools, was an elite athlete, and she committed. But um, her sister, who's several years behind her, they kind of announced it in a very unusual way. Craig Skinner's wife and daughter showed up and said, we're adding another Skinner to the family, and he immediately panicked, thinking that meant maybe they were having a baby, but nope. It's Madison Skinner. The younger sister of Avery decided to join them. She's the new Skinner there in the family. No real relation, but they're all family now. But I think that was a hilarious way to do it because Craig said, I had a couple of seconds there that I was pretty panicked <laughs> that maybe we were having a new baby. <laughs> yeah, he's going, I, I know this can't be the case, but I'm awfully glad to have another Skinner in the fold. And Maddie Skinner, uh, I mean, is just going to go on and have a magnificent, she and her sister, but Maddie in particular, just getting started. They're number two. People think that the sky is the limit for Maddie Skinner. 
Out of bounds again. Good read by Curry, letting that ball drop, and it was very close right on the sideline, so the five-point lead seemed comfortable moments ago. I had the feeling during one of the timeouts, you go, look, Purdue has played really well. They've got Kentucky with a slow start. I think Purdue's got to win this first set, especially after they led by five. Teeler, high flyer out of the middle, patrolling at only five foot ten. And off the top of the block and out of bounds. And here comes Kentucky. They have erased that early lead. Well, Kentucky just, just settling in, like you said. They they had to, you know, this always happens right? and early on in the match, and you're getting a feel for one another and just what we need to do defensively or offensively. And it looks like Kentucky is settling into this very good Purdue team. So as I talked about, we're gonna have a battle here. Five nothing run. Bush deflected. Curry all over that. Love this view. Azani Taylor once again. When you look at that, that ball they set in the middle there again. She's one on one. Just hang it up there. It's like a one and a half, almost a two ball. She trips even and gets up <laughs> and still is able to get on this ball hard. Look at her, get her, get her footing, footing and get back. Cut that ball to the right back. Yeah, she is really a unique talent. Remember, she is a middle blocker, but Craig Skinner has said, look, we're going to rewrite her playbook a little bit. Nothing says she's got to hit in the middle every time. She hits out on the right, hits combination plays, and really, really a dynamic performer. And her, her teammates rally around her. They just love her. She's from Grand Prairie, Texas. Funny story. You know, you update your stats every day. She was eight of nine. And her hitting percentage on the year only went up a couple of hundreds. She's hit 479, <laughs> fourth best in the country. And she's doing that in a very strong SEC. All right, so Purdue now, after having the five-point advantage, where do they go to try to slow this thing down? They have given up the lead. They led by five, and now they trail by one. Yeah, they have. And, and again, they need to just go back and be patient with what they're doing. See if they can score on the first ball. First ball side out is always the name of the game. And if they can kind of just get a little bit momentum going with one side out and a good defensive play, they know they're in for a long night and they can play with this team point for point, but they have to settle down, steady in here and make sure that they're smart with where they're going defensively as well. Kentucky, which got off to a very, very slow start. Well, we've got a moment before they serve this up on Tuesday. Catch an MLB matchup as the Mets take on the Cubs. First of a three-game series at Wrigley Field. Begins 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. When Kentucky was trailing by five, they were hitting negative, which means they had more errors blocked or hit out of bounds than they had kills. And now they're positive 171. So turned it around, and Purdue's got to put an end to this. Stumbler again. Wow, is she talented. She she gets on that ball so fast, but it's the ball control. First, it starts with a tough serve down the line to Otek, gets Purdue completely out of it, and a free ball coming back. You, you really just can't give Kentucky a free ball because they are going to score. They're going to be able to score from everywhere. Give you some numbers on Kentucky's turnaround in just a moment. I'll give it to you right now. Kentucky started, get this, Salima, three kills, seven errors. That's big time negative. Since then, 11 kills, no errors. I tell you what, and, and, and sometimes it's just, you see a block in front of you, you want to avoid it. That's not what I normally see. I'm not sure where I'm going with this ball right now. And, and just, just steadying out. This is one of the best offensive teams in the country for a reason. Good serve by Newton, but again, Stumler has shown you complete versatility and different parts of the court that she's able to put the ball away. Well, if she's one-on-one, -on -one, she's going to go, she sees it and going hard in the middle of the court, but if there's a block in front of her, she can tool it, she can hit off the edge and high off the hands as well. So you're going to see a variety of shots from her tonight. And you know what we've seen all day long? Really good play at the setting position. Yeah. For Wisconsin, for Florida, for Texas, for Nebraska, Every team, obviously, you got to have it. We've had that today. Newt out of the back row and misses it long. Well, they call on her a ton for all those balls that are off the net, out of system, wanting her to get a big swing on it. And that's a, that's a lot on her. She takes a lot of swings every single match. Defensive specialist Lauren Tharp on to serve. 
Oh, that's a good swing and so much needed. Quickly out of the middle for J.L. Johnson, 6'2 junior out of Mooresville, Indiana. I like that Haley Bush pushed all the way to the right side of the court on that pass, still goes to her middle and may come to her. And that's difficult to defend as a middle blocker on the other side of the net. Boy, Curry is just patrolling. She's taken almost every first contact. Curry again, got to keep the ball off her. She's just got magnificent control, but an unforced error once again by Azani Teeler. So a break for Purdue, four contacts. Well, Trammell's in a, in a good position there, but Teeler just looking to find some space on the court right now. And you're gonna see her run to the right and hit a high ball and Stumler run to the left and hit her ball on that side of the court. Well, I don't get that serve at all. That was, you, in the old days, you used to call that a lollipop, and that's not a good thing. Ball off the block and out of bounds. And you mentioned Taylor Trammell, six foot two freshman. Big moment for her. Where's she from? Lexington, Kentucky. The number one blocker in all of the Big Ten is Taylor Trammell. We haven't seen her on the offense so far. She had eight block assists against Oregon just last night. She wears number 17 in black, and after a couple of miscues, timeout is called, tied at 21. The final piece of the semifinal puzzle, Washington, there is John Cook from nearby University of Nebraska. What a job he has done for so many years and uh, built Nebraska, or continued what I should say, kept Nebraska as such a perennial powerhouse in the NCAA tournament. Lauren Stiverns did not play yesterday. She did play today, but uh, by my eye, she was certainly less than 100%, but that's to take nothing away from the University of Texas. How good were Fields, Eggleston, and Jenna Gabriel, the setting for Texas? Texas was the better team today and deserve every bit of going back to their 13th NCAA semifinals. Yeah, that was a, a, an amazing performance by Texas. You mentioned a couple of the players, also Asia O'Neill stepped up big time for them tonight. It was, a, it was a, a nice performance by a very, very talented Texas team against a very good Nebraska team. That's tough for, for John Cook being at home and, and being out of it. That's a tough thing to, to have to deal with right now. Texas will take on Wisconsin on Thursday night. And Washington will face the winner of either Purdue or Kentucky. Little miscommunication. Wow. That is very surprising. Well, and tough out of a out of a timeout, too. You know, yeah, you've got your exactly. plan, you've, you've got it down, and, and this is what we're doing. This is the game plan. And they have to really work that out and figure out where they're going. Well, Teeler was going right, and the set was going left. To Stumler, <laughs> throws it down the line. Good defensive stretch. That was Newton patrolling the backcourt. Good set by Curry, and then once again, boy, Ali Stumler has, she has really worked hard physically. She has got some major heat now in her junior year. She absolutely does. I mean, this is she's always been a phenomenal player, but I agree with you, Paul. She's just gotten stronger and stronger. It is a heavier ball, and it's just gotten more physical over the years. Six kills on 18 swings for the All-American out of Kentucky. Newton backcourt stuffed on the outside by Avery Skinner. Let's go down courtside to Holly Rowe. You guys are talking about Allie Stumler and just the great strength in, uh, that she's exhibiting now. And, her coach, Craig Skinner, said she just has an amazing work ethic. She's the hardest worker on the team. She's continued to hit with more and more range, added more range to her game since her freshman year. And that all comes down to the extra work she's putting in the gym. Well, it is certainly showing. Thank you, Holly. Nice stretch by Curry. Dug again by Curry. I talked about the good setters. What about the Libros? Trammell stepping in to get her first hand on that. Curry again. Long rally, momentum off the top, not yet. Another dig by Newton. Teeler off the edge of the block, finally got one-on-one -on -one against Chin, number five in black. 
Man, but that was all Gabby Curry. Every single ball that came over the net, it seemed like Gabby Curry was digging. And Kentucky transitioning out of this, and Teeler able to find that edge, finally getting the ball through the block. Set points for the third time. Gabby Curry, Libero of the Year in the SEC. And that ball is dug, but couldn't be controlled. And so one set point saved by Purdue. Nice play by again by Taylor Trammell. Curry already has seven digs. Good pass by Tharp for the set off the edge of the block. Look at the stretch by Newton for the tie. Skinner throwing it down, and that time off of Bush and out of the reach of Purdue. And after trailing by as many as five, Kentucky, the number two overall seed, go on a 6 nothing run and close out the opening set by a score of 25 to 23. Well, we found out Purdue is for real. Kentucky's found that out as well. Pretty good start. Kentucky up one set to none. The second seeded Kentucky Wildcats have had yet another fabulous season. Their only blemish was as we just saw in the other regional final to Florida in five sets. They lead the nation in offensive efficiency, have one of the top coaches in the business, and now their highest ever seed at the number two overall seed. Wisconsin just barely survived over Florida an hour ago. What a dramatic match as we welcome you back to Omaha, Nebraska. The final spot, the final piece of the puzzle for the national semifinals. Let's go back to Holly once again, courtside in Omaha. You guys remember, Kentucky is one of those teams that played fall volleyball. The SEC had their scheduled season at the normal time. And so he said, we have been going almost year round. He said, I gave the team two weeks off in August and then a week here and there. But then the two months off completely through November and December, he said, it's been really hard to ramp back up, try to find matches get everybody back in shape in January, February to be ready to play in the NCAA tournament. Said we were very conscientious of them landing repeatedly over and over, really trying to manage that workload on their legs. But Kentucky looks fresh. They look like they've got some good energy. So how they've managed this unusual season has been very good for Kentucky. Thank you, Holly. That's a great point. There were four conferences that played in the fall, the ACC, SEC, Big 12, and Sunbelt. And remember, we had a long conversation with Mary Wise about that. Volleyball was the first sport during the pandemic to go indoors and play. And, and everybody has tried and worked so hard to keep the athletes healthy and the medical staffs and everybody and the athletes have been really responsible not being able to lead a normal college life to protect themselves and also to protect their teammates. Underway, second set. There is Craig Skinner once again, has not lost a set in this tournament so far. 3-0 over UNLV and then 3-0 over, I'm not exaggerating. Look, this is not hyperbole. Western Kentucky is really, really good. Yeah, that is a very good team. Excellent, one of the best ball control teams that I've seen. Uh, so far and it was unbelievable display of that it got away from them in that in that last set But I tell you that was a, an excellent team Travis Hudson has done a fantastic job there at Western Kentucky and they have been for a long time Cleveland misses that ball out of bounds Salima, but if you're Dave Shondell What do you tell your team because you go wait a minute? We were up 17 12 do you even go there. Do you talk we let that one get away? I think they should feel confident that they can get leads on this team well, I, I would agree with you, and I, I think he knows. He knows how good Kentucky is, and he's prepared for it, but he also knows how good they are. I mean, he has he's very confident in this Purdue team and how they can battle. He's said as much. Hey, Kentucky, I have the most respect for them in the world, but let me tell you who's a good team. It's our team, so keep them confident and keep them feeling good. They're going to have some success here. Stumbler high into the block. Nice touch in the backcourt. Good ball control. Transition opportunity. But Stumbler getting the stuff along with Elise Getzinger. And she just does so much so well. And that that move, that blocking move, all the way out to the to the pin on that slide. 
beautiful job by Ali Stumler. Not, she not only does it offensively, but she does it on the defensive end as well. First block for Stumler, third overall for Kentucky. Oh, what a block. Azani Teeler, along with some help from Maddie Skinner. When you're going to see Purdue move Newton around a little bit here, she comes in on this rip, and they just stay there. They don't move at all. They don't swing block to the pin. They track her, watch her coming in. A huge block. <laughs> you do not want to challenge Azani Teeler into the <laughs> low cross court. You don't want low anything. <laughs> that ball hit out of bounds on the transition, or I should say on the slide, Jail Johnson missing that wide, number 18 in black. Going to continue to go down the line here to Otex, see if they can keep that ball on that side of the court. A break there for Purdue, a service error. Serving hadn't been a big issue so far, at least as far as aces and errors, one ace apiece for Purdue and Kentucky, and that is Kentucky's third service error as uh, Caitlin Newton, one of the offensive leaders for Purdue, will go back to the line. Off the top of the tape, and even Teeler, as spectacular as an athlete as she is, can't get there, and we're tied at four. Best three out of five sets, first four sets to 25 points. Already had two five setters today, Salima, so, so why not another? Washington not? and Pittsburgh and Wisconsin and Florida. It's supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be easy to advance. Exactly. Stumbler. Stumbler's been fabulous so far. I know it's early. Boy, is she good. Well, I tell you, it, it's like you talked about before. It's just how, ma how many shots she has. I mean, if it's, if it's not open in the middle of the court, she's turned that ball down the line or she's hitting off the block. We're going to keep saying that, but that's, that's her game, and that's why she's so good. Stumbler now already with 21 swings. Remember, the teams get two days off before the semifinals. Good pass. Nice side-out score. Much needed. Nice play that time by Purdue, and good delivery by Haley Bush. Much improved setter out of Union, Kentucky. First team all Big Ten this year. There she is wearing number two in black. Little Kentucky flavor on both sides of the net for this match. Teeler again. Why do you think Purdue is serving Curry so much? Or is she just taking that much court? Well, she's taking that much court. I mean, they're they're working certain areas of the court, of course, but she's taking a lot of, of court. And they have they have a ton of numbers as well. What are they hitting in every rotation based on where the ball's coming from? So that sometimes there's it's a miss. Sometimes it's it's intended based on some other numbers. Newton doesn't get a swing out of the backcourt. Curry coming left side now to Skinner. Good recovery by Avery Skinner. We're in number four and wide in the left front in the cross court, and Curry can't come up with that much needed kill off the left side. That by Maddie Chin. Maddie Chin is such a nice player for Purdue. Hits at a high contact point. Really a good blocker. They like her size, her length. Short serve again. Stumbler all over that. High up off the hands of the block off of Trammell and out of bounds by number four. Skinner will give you her numbers. Four kills on ten swings. Kentucky hitting 286 so far in the second set. 207 for the match. Good pass. Trammell quickly. Stumbler with a dig in transition, not there for Skinner. Oh, that's a good swing into the cross court, but ruled just out of bounds. Well, and this is where Purdue, Purdue just needs to control what they're doing on their side of the net, clean up any unforced errors, whether it's service errors or hitting errors, and, and keep some pressure on Kentucky and try to win, win those long rallies. That ball served out of bounds. Mentioned that Purdue was 15 and 6 so far on the year. They beat High Point in the opening round, three sets to none. Came in as the sec seventh seed, so they didn't play in the opening round. And then beat Oregon yesterday when they held the Ducks. Pretty explosive offensive team to only 120 efficiency. Horning on to serve for the Boilermakers. Skinner is roofed. Trammell on the outside with Cleveland, number 20 in black. 
tell you, Trammell is such a phenomenal blocker, and the way she moves across the court, closes the block, and gets her hands over. One of the best blockers you're going to see in the tournament. Dave Shondell saying that she has the biggest hands he's ever seen on a player her size and said that she was the best young blocker he's ever had at Purdue. That's high praise. There have been some good players going through the Boilermakers. Good recovery but by Lilly, but nobody there to follow up. Trammell has been blocking the ball seven plus blocks in eight straight matches. That is a huge number, but she averages 1.6 per set. That's best in all of the Big Ten. Remarkable for a freshman. I've never seen a freshman lead the Big Ten in blocking. When it's just the natural ability, that's what Dave Sardinell said. She's just a naturally good blocker. Easy ball to Curry. She takes that one overhand, and that was like a practice side out. Kill off the left side by Maddie Skinner. And Madison Lilly just delivering such a beautiful ball on all over the court, but really to the pins right now. That perfect tempo, perfect rhythm for them to get on that ball. Ryan Walker on to serve, wearing number nine in white. Serve and play some defense for Kentucky. Good block touch. You can see the play develop from behind. Delivery and nice play into the cross court once again by Skinner. Well, in Purdue's offense, they're running that three with the inside two. You've got, you've got the right side blocker pinched all the way in. That's why they're able to touch that ball. Watch them moving again. Newton around a little bit. See what they do with her. Very tight second set back and forth. And Walker misses the serve. So Purdue back within one. Nice dig in the right back by Cleveland, giving Purdue a chance off speed. Taken and controlled that time by Lilly. And off the block and out of bounds. Remember the story that Craig Skinner told us when Madison Lilly first came to his volleyball camp as a seventh, seventh grader. She was the best player and the best athlete in the camp. He said, I'm going to make sure I get that girl's parents' phone number, contact information, and now <laughs> here she is, the senior All-American setter for the University of Kentucky. We've got Madison Lilly and Sydney Hilly, two of the very, very best in the business, playing for Wisconsin and Kentucky, respectively, the number one and number two overall seeds. Match has been very, very close throughout. Early lead for Purdue, 17-12. Couldn't maintain it. Kentucky wins the opening set 25-23. Stumler again, good block touch. Chin into the cross court. Curry laying it all out and ball high up into the line. And that it must have touched the ceiling. You can't see it. If the ball touches any part of the scoreboard and then passes over the net, then it's a violation. If it stays on your side, all well and fine. Now that we've moved into the big, it was a it was a factor in the convention center. That now we've moved into the big arena. There's just a very very big scoreboard, like in every major. There it is in every major arena. The ball goes up and touches any part of the scoreboard and then passes over the net. It's a violation. Tied at 12. One on one. One-on-one -on -one isolation, and we saw that an awful lot against Western Kentucky yesterday and an easy kill for Skinner. I tell you, but what a swing for Skinner. I, you know, I don't care how many people are on the other side of the net, how many are blocking you. Look, she is so high, gets on the ball at such a, a fast pace and just really has some great vision. An unbelievable freshman for Kentucky. The Skinner sisters are having an awfully good start to this regional final. I'll give you the cumulative numbers in just a moment. Good swing by Maddie Chin. Combined, they are 14 for 34 with two errors. I can quickly do the efficiency. They're hitting about 375 as a sister pair. Pretty good. You take that every time out. Every time. 
very easy serve right in the lap of Curry. And off the edge. No, that's stuffed. It got a piece of Teeler. Azani Teeler, one of the leaders in efficiency, and so far, Purdue's done a really good job on number 15. Why? Well, they have. Look at how they're placing their block and dropping into the angle. And that's what they want to do is take her cross court, force her to hit out of bounds, and if she hits cross court, it's going right into the block. Maddie Chin, number five in black, diving inside. Off speed there. Fabulous get out of the backcourt by Purdue, working hard. Stumbler. And again, another save in the backcourt, but Purdue could not make the play. Now tied at 14. First set was 25-23. Uh, you know, that, that's what you, you say. I want to get a stretch of points here. We want to score one real one, get another one, side out right away. And who's going to extend extend the lead here? We could go point for point the rest of, this, rest of the way, though. Stumler can be available out of the back row. We'll have the media timeout after this point. Dug by Tharp. There is Stumler right on cue. I've been expecting that. Stumler serving and rips the pipe at the media timeout. Kentucky with a 15-14 advantage. Well, for Kentucky, a lot of people can score, but right now it's Allie Stumler. She's got 10 kills and only one error for Kentucky and just getting on it from every single position on the left side of the court, moving the ball around, and then they're setting her out of the back row as well. Ali Stumler having a big night already for Kentucky. So far, Stumler in the NCAA tournament, 37 kills, six errors on 72 attempts, hitting over 430. That should be against the rules. Nice play by Tharp, stretching out. Yeah, that's a great hustle by Tharp. She's such a fantastic defensive player. Makes some moves, reads the play, able to change direction quickly, and actually gets her hand on this ball with a dive. They just couldn't come up with it. Really good attempt that time by Tharp. 5'6", junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. And Azani Teeler are using that quick arm. We have seen unbelievable talent. We we'll talk about Ali Stumler. Because, well, you know, when you watch the NCAA basketball tournament, you talk about professional future. Stumler, Maddie Skinner, they have a tremendous opportunity, if they choose to pursue it, to represent the United States internationally and at the Olympic Games. They are that good, just like Dana Retke, among so many others. Wonderful dig by, was that Teeler in the right back? Sure and once was. again, coming through for Trammell. Now, Salima, you played some time ago at Penn State. Would you say across the board, the talent level is much higher now than when you played? Oh, well, everyone's just so much more physical. I mean, that's the difference. The game is just played at such a higher level. The, all the advances with, with lifting and nutrition and how, how kids are growing and how much bigger they are than when we played, absolutely much more physical on the overpass that's a miss by the freshman number 17 trammel got to throw that ball straight down yeah i've been so impressed this year and in many years past how the level of of athleticism and how talented and how well trained these players are the sport just keeps getting stronger each and every year <laughs> cleveland again after a really good dig by lily and off the edge of the block and down. That is uh, one of the future stars, Maddie Skinner. Well, and Lily doing just such a nice job defensively handling the ball and moving the ball around, putting her hitters in perfect position, creating a lot of seams, a lot of opportunities of one-on-one -on -one and well, as well. And Maddie Skinner finishing that play. Very tight second set, as was the first 15-14 at the media timeout. And now Kentucky has run off a couple 18-16 advantage over the number seven seed Purdue Boilermakers. And Dave Shondell wanted to take a timeout. Taylor Trammell, as mentioned, has roots in this match from Lexington, Kentucky, and Holly Rowe has more on the outstanding freshman middle blocker for Purdue. Yeah, we've seen some really nice moments from Taylor Trammell. She is just a freshman, but she's been through a lot this year. She grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, and really started playing and fine-tuning her game for a club team named Lexington United. Her coach was Chris Bierman, and sadly, he passed away from COVID in January, just 53 years old. She has said that she would not be where she is today without his mentorship and helping her really learn the fine-tuning of volleyball that she has now for Purdue. So COVID has affected so many people this year, but very sad story for Taylor losing her club coach.
Well, I tell you, Holly, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned that. With Chris Bierman is, is was a friend to all of us, and certainly the, the whole Ball State Muncie connection as well, with coaches on both sides and, and myself in the volleyball community. Uh, a big loss for so many of us, and it was a, it was a tough one this year for all of us uh, that loved Chris Bierman so well. Newton with an out-of-system swing once again, and vital Purdue staying in contact with the second-seeded Kentucky Wildcats. Good pass on a tough serve. Getzinger is slowed. Either one Skinner on one pin and the other on the outside, and that ball missed. A rare mistake by number two, Maddie Skinner. On well, that short serve, gets her out of the play, forces them to set that ball either middle or right, and then she transition has to transition out of it, getting up quickly, and misses wide. Oh, an ace serve. Purdue has been moving the ball around, serve short. I thought they got a little bit soft from the service line, going time and time again to Gabby Curry, but Otek right on time. 21st ace on the season. A little bit of a yo-yo here. Move her up, move her back a little bit, move her around. Right side by number four. Avery Skinner, Maddie Skinner, the head coach Craig Skinner, no relation other than the fact that he loves them both, big time. Walker on again, and working on Otek. Bush can't keep the ball alive, so. One ace from the Libero, and now an ace from number nine, the defensive specialist for Kentucky. And you know, you gotta remember that Purdue mostly passes with two, so they've got a lot of court to, to cover, and they like it that way. They wanna pass with Otek and, and whoever else is back there at that time, but I tell you what, that, that can cause some issues sometimes as well. Did you see that play by Stumler? I did, I did. Did you see that play? I Completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> completely sprawled out. We won't forget that play. Especially, look when it comes. Once again, it gives Kentucky the 21-19 advantage and forces this. Look at, everybody's looking up at the scoreboard for Kentucky. They want to see that play again. That was unbelievable. Lays out, gets up, step close, and hard into the wow. cross court. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's not many players that can do that at all. That was an amazing display of athleticism. Look at that, Ali Stumler now with 11 kills, one air, and this was, look at that. Spectacular, just spectacular by Stumler. That could be the play that wins the set for Kentucky. Absolutely, at a crucial time, a huge point. That was unbelievable. I, I, I wanna see it again, but we won't. <laughs> we'll move on. The winner of this gets the University of Washington. All of that coming your way on ESPN. Both semifinals are on ESPN on Thursday night. Texas will take on Wisconsin. Wisconsin was given everything they wanted and much, much more. What a valiant, brave, tough effort by the University of Florida, eventually dropping the fifth set. Dana Recchi with the decisive block. Wisconsin wins it 15 to 12 after trailing, the Badgers trailing by as many as four in the fifth set. It was such an amazing match, and, and watching Florida battle the way they did and, and wow. Wisconsin battle back, I mean, I, I just can't say enough. Fun match to watch, heartbreaker for, of course, for Florida, but exciting for, for Wisconsin moving on. What, what a match, that's what the tournament's all about. 21-19, Purdue has got to stop right now and get out of this rotation. They got to side out and score. Don't know about serving Otek, but I sure know about the block. Getzinger on the outside with Skinner. Straight down stuff, and now it's the biggest lead of the set. And such a nice move by the two of them getting to the outside, <laughs> pressing back into the court. Getzinger, another wonderful freshman. Six block assists against Western Kentucky. Cleveland. Restoring some order and going right over the top of the block, number 20 in black, Grace Cleveland, 6'3 junior out of Bloomington, Illinois. We'll look at her numbers. Cleveland now just her second kill on 11 swings. Purdue needs a little bit more than that. Yeah. 
Service error into the antenna by Cleveland. So now Gabby Curry, outstanding defender back to the line for Kentucky, two points away from taking a two sets to none lead. Newton. Lilly all over that defensively off speed once again. Smart play by Stumler. And like you said, defensively, that's where they're taking care of the ball, but then they're able to transition, get that ball to Stumler, and that's what, what's going to happen. Set point number one, Madison Lilly, so athletic, just flying around with Curry at the defensive end, and now an ace to decide it for the Libro Curry and Kentucky, the number two overall seed. Goes on top, two sets to none. Purdue was right there. They had a five-point lead in the opening set and gave that up, lost 25-23. But Allie Stumler was the star of the second set. Kentucky leads it, two sets to none. The final spot in the national semifinals is on the line. One is still available to either Purdue or Kentucky. Kentucky, the number two overall seed, the highest in their program's history. They're on top. 25-23, 25-20. Paul Sunderland back with Salima Rockwell. What a day it has been. We thought yesterday was good, and it was, but today was spectacular. Washington winning early, coming back from two sets down. Texas and Nebraska, two of the, the great programs. Just your thoughts on how this day has gone to solidify the national semifinals. Well, I tell you, this is the lead up that you want going into the national championships. But teams just battling, seeing Texas do what they did tonight against a very good Nebraska team. And of course, Washington as well. Wisconsin, what a win, a comeback, I would say, because Florida was battling point for point. Wisconsin found their resilience and that will to win to make it back. Dana Recchi celebrating the stuff block and the match win to go on into the semifinals for Wisconsin for the second straight year with that broken finger and all. There you see the summary. Texas was spectacular offensively and defensively. They are going to be a load for Wisconsin and Washington. The comeback kids from Seattle. Remember, they were down 11-5 in the fifth set to Louisville, came back and won. That was miraculous enough. And then earlier today, they were down two sets to none to a really good team from Pittsburgh, which was unseeded. They were looking to make history and get all the way to the national semifinals. Instead, Washington in for the first time since 2013. And then talk to us about this particular matchup. Purdue has certainly shown they belong, but yet it's Maddie Skinner and the rest of the Kentucky Wildcats who are sitting here with a pretty comfortable lead, two sets to none. Yeah, well, Kentucky is the number two seed for a reason, and one of those reasons is Maddie Skinner. She has produced for them on every phase of the game, but I tell you what, her offensive right now, she is not playing like a freshman. She is playing like a seasoned veteran in the match tonight. Zani Teeler is another one that is providing so much offense tonight for Kentucky. Difficult to stop her. They move her around, set her high ball, set her in the middle of the court, and you can expect to see them do a lot more of that tonight with Teeler. Stumler leading the way with a dozen kills, and then Skinner Skinner along with Azani Teeler. No wonder they're the highest rated offensive team in the country. For more, before we get started in the third set, let's go back down to Holly. Well, guys, it's been a long couple of days for both of these teams. They were both here playing late into the night last night. Western Kentucky and Kentucky were here almost till midnight last night, but the players told me, hey, it's no problem. They've actually been practicing staying up late till midnight since they've been here in Omaha because they knew they had this draw where their matches would be late at night. And I really love the bench mob. They've been up, they've been dancing, they've been loud for Kentucky, and they, uh, their bedtime is not yet. I think mine is, but theirs is not. <laughs> yeah, theirs is not. I got to hang out with them. Do I? Do I have permission to stay up past midnight, Salima? 
<laughs> or do I have to be in early? I don't know if that's a good idea, Paul. I think we both need to get our sleep. This week, I agree. That's for I'm sure. A, I'm a big I'm a big fan of that at this stage. <laughs> Kentucky on top, two sets to none, and two zero. And take us inside the Purdue locker room. They've got an extended break between the second and third sets. If you're Dave Shondell, one of the best in the business, the head coach now in his 18th year for Purdue, what's his message to his Boilermakers? Well, he, he's going to tell them that he's he's proud of them and how they're battling right now, but he knows they have more in the tank and they can take it to another level. Just hang in there. They're hanging in there point for point, and then they're losing by some runs. That's what's happening right now. Hanging tight, back and forth, and then just giving away stretches. If they can control those stretches right now and move past errors, then they're going to have a better shot tonight. Boy, you mentioned runs, and that's dead on. 13 to 6 run to close out the opening set 25 23 and a 7 1 run to close out the second 25 20 and now Madison Lilly 511 senior out of Kansas second team All-American last year the setter of the year and the player of the year in the SEC boy we've had some wonderful performances right around the dial but at that position all day long nice block Getzinger is a really good freshman we talked about Trammell, but Getzinger's right there for Kentucky. Well, she just moves so well laterally, and you're going to see her involved in every play at the net. Did you see that stab by Curry? Oh, Gabby Curry turned herself into a pretzel inside out and somehow reached back, pokied that ball to keep it alive. Boy, it is hard to get the ball to the floor. Stumbler's an awesome defender as well, and then they come in off the bench with Lauren Tharp. Well, Curry just she sees the game so well and then she just moves and reacts her reaction time is unbelievable and the things that she's able to do on the court. Purdue needs a timeout. They can't let this get away. Kentucky is too good. They've sorted it out after Kentucky was off to a very slow start and just like I thought Kentucky streaking and Purdue need a timeout. Quick start for the Boilermakers last 16 matches. They've held opponents below 225. Kentucky's hitting 259 well below their average but the last couple of sets they have been lighting it up and looked like the Kentucky machine that has been rolling through teams offensively they're hitting 600 I know it's a small size here in the third but Kentucky is really starting to feel it offensively and also Kentucky seemingly is winning all the long rallies and they get another one on the nice decision from Lilly. We saw a little bit of that last match as well with Montserrat, and they're both very good at this this play. Just setting the ball over the net in the middle of a long rally, catching people on their heels. That ball's going to drop in the middle of the court. Kentucky has taken control of this match. They've won 14 out of the last 16 points. Grace Cleveland with an absolute must-have point to try to stop this early run for Kentucky. Back to the opening set. Salima, remember, Ken Kentucky trailed 17 to 12. Hustle yeah. defensively. Otek is there. Nice play by Bush at the defensive end. Oh, and just highlight down the line by Maddie Skinner. <laughs> Before that swing was only hitting 429 so far in the tournament. Yeah, she catches this ball behind her. It's. Uh, she, I lie. That's a, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. There's no other Nothing. word. Style points not not necessary. Eight to one advantage. Long way to go. Purdue has got to find a way to start scoring and siding out more than anything else. Stumbler, who's been fabulous, and that ball was in. Wow, man. That was a high level swing from off the net, chopping that ball to the deep corner and found, found the end line. How do you scout Stumler? We've seen deep cross court, sharp cross court, over the top of the block and down the line and off speed. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you gotta Big just block. Put, put the block in a spot and, and play some good defense around it and just, just hope you can make some defensive plays. Skinner and Getzinger on the outside in Kentucky is rolling on top 10 to 1 in the third over the seven seed Purdue Boilermakers and right now Purdue couldn't wait 
they're out of timeouts. Let's take a look at the semifinal bracket. One more spot to be filled, and at this point, it certainly looks like Kentucky, but there's room. Washington, the sixth seed, and then one and four, Wisconsin and Texas. That's Thursday, 9.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Oh, good Nebraska fans, even though their beloved Huskers lost earlier today. Nebraska loves their volleyball. What a tradition they have. It was all started back in 1977 by Terry Pettit, who built the foundation, then as head coach of Nebraska, won a national championship in 1995, two-time national coach of the year, 21 times a conference champ. Terry's retired now, living in Lincoln, and he turned over the reins to John Cook, who has... Uh, managed and marshaled that esteemed program very very well losing three sets to one earlier today to texas jared elliott how time passes in his 20th year in austin 13 yeah, times to the national semifinals <laughs> purdue time but they have got to really clean things up and kentucky's tough it's hard to get the ball to the floor against them Good block touch on the outside by Stumler. Fantastic volleyball from Kentucky. Well, it's it's every phase of the game. We talk about the block touches, they're slowing the ball down on that end of the ball, picking up tips and then transitioning. That, that's the key to the game, and that's the toughest part. Can you play defense and then transition to score? And that's what Kentucky is doing right now. No team in the tournament, more so than the Washington Huskies, are going to cherish these two days off. They went five sets in their opening round against Dayton, and then they went five sets again against Louisville, and then five more sets earlier today after going two sets down to Pittsburgh. Allie Stumler made a mistake. Headline news in Lexington, Kentucky. It's the second time it happened since she arrived. <laughs> yeah, going after that overpass and just clip the top of the top of the tape. right in the lap to Curry, easy side out. Does Purdue need to change? What do they need to change to try to get back in this? Well, they're gonna continue to have to serve tough and, and I know they're moving the ball around. That one, like you said, that was kind of right in Curry's lap and they're gonna, they're gonna run their offense. So if they can serve a little bit tougher, take some chances from the, the service line and get them off the net. This is really comfortable self separation. Nice dig once again by Lily. I'll get your, her dig. Oh! What a closer on the outside. Stumbler now with 14 kills. Madison Lilly with nine digs. Unbelievable swing and a hard, sharp cross court by Ali Stumbler. Newton finally off the top of the block and out of the reach of Skinner. Speaking of outside hitters, what a tremendous clutch performance by Molly Haggerty in the earlier regional final. She was just so tough down the stretch for Wisconsin. Once again, 15 to 12 winner over Florida. Newton taking a tough swing, dug by Skinner, number four in white. That ball might have been out of bounds. Chin off the edge and swings it inside. Nice swing that time by Maddie Chin, number five in black. Some, some good volleyball on the Purdue side. They're starting to find a little bit of fire. They're trying to get each other going right now. Newton taking some big swings out of the back row, but Chin, hard cross court. That's her swing, that's her shot. Tough serve, that's a good place to start. Stumbler again. Look at how smart she is moving the ball around and gets her Kentucky team immediately out of a tough situation. Fantastic hustle on the Purdue side, making their way into the bench, but it was Ali Stumbler creating all of that chaos on that side of the court. Tharp on to serve. Big lead for the second seed. And that ball out of bounds, no touch, no net violation, and an easy point for Kentucky, and they are starting to roll to their 22nd win. They were 19-1 and one in the SEC when their fourth straight SEC title.
Newton dug again. Stumbler taking a tough swing. Perfect dig by Otek. Right back at you, says Gabby Curry. <laughs> Madison Lilly. You said her. She just loved to get in the kill category. And I've she's really athletic. That. Yeah, I've she's, she's, she's pretty before. effective. Me too, yeah. She loves that play. That ball's dug up on the net and she's front row. She's going to just go up and crank it. Boy, Kentucky supports her effort in terms of assists. You look at those assists. You come, first of all, perfect pass, wonderful choices by Lily, and then weapons right around the dial for Kentucky. The well, second the seed with very good reason. Yeah, you said it. She's got weapons, but she does such a nice job moving the ball around. Great dis distribution, even distribution, and the flight of her ball is just on, uh, phenomenal. That ball perfectly placed on the back line. Crushed out of the back row by Caitlin Newton. Let's un update her numbers. Now eight kills on 26 swings. Purdue is a team hitting only 102. Kentucky now up to 275. Still well below their average. Purdue's done a pretty good job. A lot of that slowing them down early on, they being Kentucky. Stumler. Beautiful dig by Bush, the setter in the right back, and a net violation called against Kentucky. 16-7. There is time. There is a glimmer of hope. Purdue just needs one run. Nice pass by Tharp. Offensive machine, don't you think, Salima? I mean, this is just such a smooth operating outfit. Well, it, it is, and they, they handle the ball well, and, and they can move it around, and everyone can score. It, it really is a whale or oil machine, like you said. it. They're playing like one of the top teams in the country right now. Purdue is a very good volleyball team, an excellent volleyball team, and I tell you what, Kentucky is, is really showing what they can do. What a fantastic one-on-one -on -one block by the freshman Trammell. One-on-one -on -one against one of the best attackers in the country. Nice job by Trammell just staying home and, and reading that play. You know that Stumbler can come out of the back row. She doesn't bite and move in any other direction. Horning on to serve. Getzinger thumping that ball through on the slide. I mean, Getzinger sort of flies, if you will, under the radar. She's hitting 348, averages over a block, part of that number one recruiting class that had Maddie Skinner in it as well. And she is really good. She is. She's good. She's smooth. She's long. She can hit from all over the court. I tell you, I love the way she plays the game. Tough out of system opportunity. Newton taking a tough swing. Oh, that's nicely placed. Good offense that time between Cleveland and Haley Bush. Yeah, I really like that. They like to run her on the slide sometimes. She'll hit off two feet on the right side. I like getting Cleveland the ball just a little bit more, but Haley Bush does such a nice job locating. We haven't talked about her enough. Fantastic setter for Purdue that runs this offense at such a high level. And she wants more. She wants to get this team going. You're going to see her get them fired up right now. Right side again, going into the middle of the court. Nice stay at, stab by Harning. Newton having to take another tough swing. Stumbler paddling that ball up. Horning again, patrol in the middle back. What a dig by Gabby Curry. Quality, quality play on both sides. And then finally, Jail Johnson ripping that ball to the floor out of the middle, number 18 in black. Excellent patience on the side of Purdue. Just staying with it, staying in the play. And when they have a perfect pass, getting that ball to Jail Johnson, it's available, it's open. Nice job in the middle of the court. Purdue in double figures. They need to string together a run of three or four or five and put some pressure on Kentucky. There you go. Nice block on the outside. Cleveland along with Johnson. Well, 
two showed earlier in the match, certainly they came out like gangbusters going after it and really playing at a high level. It's in there. They have to just kind of continue to chip away and, and play the volleyball that they know how. Tight pass. And that's going to be a net violation called against Lily. She's saying no. I got hit in the head. That makes it a, if the call stands, that's a 7-2 run. Yeah, she's saying it again. She hit me on the head. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if if a right cross is part of the challenge. Let's take a look. <laughs> so here goes Lily. Oh. Oh, net violation. Yep. Yeah, That's Kentucky. Newton. Kentucky should challenge. That was a net violation on number four. There comes the challenge. Yep. Obviously, the contact was completely inadvertent by Caitlin Newton, but as she followed through, you could plainly see that she made contact with the top of the tape. So this call should be reversed. And that's a big break and a big blow to the hopes of Purdue continuing their run. That would have been a 7-2 run. Yeah, they were definitely making a push here. You'll see Lily go well, up. All right, another question for you, Selena. Yeah. I'm was the ball completely on Purdue's side, well, and did Madison Lilly violate the plane? That's, that's also that's something that can be reviewed. That is a question. Right, right when you were about to ask me, I'm watching that ball and seeing if it goes across across the plane, and it kind of looked like it did. That's a nice high reach by Lilly. There's the bench crew. They are. Stand here. Let's take another look from overhead. Is that wow? It's in the plane based on the overhead view. So that's a legal contact, in my opinion, by Madison Lilly. And what we saw from our net camera was a net violation going up against Caitlin Newton. You got this move, don't view. you, Salima? You got this, I do. don't you? I got it yeah, somewhere. I'll bet you do. <laughs> I mean, it's hiding deep. <laughs> it was in there long ago, it's still in there somewhere. This has taken a while to sort out, to reset it for you. Purdue got out to a really good start. They led it 17-12, but they gave up then a 13-6 run to close out the opening set. Number two seed Kentucky wins it 25-23. And then Kentucky in control of the second set. Once again, a big run, 7-1 run to close out the, the set 25-20. Led 6-0 early timeout, and we're going to get a very, very important call. This could go a couple of different ways. Net violation on number four. Net violation on Caitlin Newton. So that's a big reversal. A two-point switch on the challenge. So good use of the challenge by head coach Craig Skinner. And I think Dave Shondell is saying, wait a minute, didn't the ball violate the plane first? That's the conversation they're going to have. And it's it's nice that the ref can give him that opportunity to have that conversation but she's going to get back to play Kayla Kimura is the second referee and like you said that takes some a little bit of wind out of your oh, sails yeah. when you're on a oh, roll absolutely running some points here and Purdue now needs to side out stay tough here in servicey well, how many big runs do you think you can put on a team like Kentucky, the quality of Kentucky? I don't think very many. Walker no, comes on to serve. 19-11, big two-point switch, challenges remaining. That was a very interesting call. Very close to violating the plane was Madison Lilly, but on the overhead view, all it just has to be one sliver of the ball still in the plane, and you're legally allowed to go up and get it. Here's Walker, who's been good in serve and defense. Newton comes right back, hammers that ball down the line, and now Purdue needs to ignite another run. I like that that play by, by Haley Bush, setting Newton all the way out to the pin, giving her some space to hit that ball down the line. Good pass by Stumler on a very good serve. Oh, ripped down the line. Maddie Skinner, even against Otec, couldn't make a play on that. Skinner now with her ninth kill on 21 swings. Taking some big swings with a lot of heat on the right side of the court. 
Gabby Curry has once again been spectacular. 15 digs, Madison Lilly has 10. Through the block and down, that's another nice response. Heavy arm from Newton, number four in black. I tell you, we knew they were gonna rely on her. She gets had a ton of balls already with 32 swings. Caitlin Newton taking care of business and doing her best to rally this Purdue team to come back here in this set. Does Purdue have one more run? They've already shown that they, oh, ooh, just out of bounds. Wow, that was really close. And now the lead is eight. Kentucky looking for a three sets to none sweep. They'll take on the University of Washington on Thursday night if they can finish this off. Tharp has been equally solid, serving and playing defense. Well, you don't want to go to Curry. She is all over that. And that's going to be a net violation. And now Kentucky is just three points away. Well, Curry is just so in tune with what's going on on the other side of the net, just watching everything develop, knowing when the setter is going to dump, being in the right position defensively. Unbelievable Kentucky is display. Th three points away from getting to a place that they have always dreamt of. That's to the national semifinals. Neither of these programs, both have been solid over the last several years. No question, Kentucky and Purdue. And Kentucky is three points away from going to the national semifinals for the first time in school history. Right side, Teeler. Good cover by Tharp. And a better block. Boy, as advertised, Taylor Trammell is really going to be special. Just a freshman for Purdue. Tell you what, she was all by herself on that one. Lined up perfectly in the ball that was off the net and inside. Not easy to do. And Teeler, excuse me, Trammell just taking care of it. Back to Stumler, who misses that ball out of bounds. Good pass under a little bit of, oh, Teeler again unloading down the line. Now Kentucky is two points away. Wow. They gave her some space and she took it, crushed that wow. ball down the line. <laughs> wow. Texas, Wisconsin, and it looks like Washington. And the number two seed, Kentucky, now one point away. Your thoughts quickly on that one, Salima. <laughs> Going to be an unbelievable night once again in the semifinals. I tell you, watching, watching those matches is going to be, I think they're all going to go five. We'll see what happens here. Now, Washington might be the team of destiny. They ended the magical trip for Pittsburgh. Match point, Stumler with the dig. And into the finals, the semifinals they go. Kentucky playing like the number two seed. Such a high level of volleyball. So clean on their side of the net. And Coach Craig Skinner has got to be so excited for his team, his squad, and what he's done to build this, build this program and get it to this point. Saw the two college teammates, Craig Skinner and assistant coach John Shondell, brother of Dave. Very, very close volleyball community in Muncie, Indiana, Muncieana Volleyball Club. And obviously Purdue has tremendous respect for the Kentucky Wildcats. And congratulations to Dave Shondell. Purdue had a superb season. They had their opportunities in the opening set. Kentucky, the number two seed, they look all of a team. As we talked the other day to the coach of Western Kentucky, he said, Kentucky is built to win a national championship. Have you seen anything that would dissuade you from that? Not at all. From the ball control to the offensive firepower to the setter that is playing at an extremely high level there, Libero. I, I mean, it is a complete team, and I'm excited to watch Kentucky take on Washington this week. Let's go down to Holly Rowe with one of the stars for Kentucky, Allie Stumler. 
Well, Allie, big cheers from your team as they leave the court. You guys have just done something that's never been done in program history. How did you get it done to become one of the Final Four teams standing? Man, there's so many things that this team um, brings day in and day out that's so cool to be a part of. You know, our seniors have brought us a long way, and that's something that we will never take for granted, just the leadership on this team. So especially in such a, you know, unprecedented time like this, it's hard for everyone, but to be able just to have a championship and come out and bring what we can do every single day is awesome. So I'm really proud of this group. You had an incredible play during this match where you lay out, you get your hand down for the pancake, and then get up and terminate the volleyball. How are you everywhere all the time for this Kentucky team? <laughs> you know, I just give credit back to my team. Um, every play doesn't happen without other people around you, so I just definitely give credit back to them. They're awesome and make everything happen. I can't do it alone, so definitely credit back to them. For people who will see Kentucky on the national stage, maybe for the first time in the national semifinals, what can you say about the heart and soul of this team that has driven you to this point? Um, you know, they, their heart and just drive competitiveness every single day. You know, we talk in practice how we're so prepared for this moment and the moments to come because of the depth that we have in practice. You know, we're playing one of the toughest teams ourselves. And um, every single day, that other side brings it. And we have to compete against a really good blocking team, a really good serving team. So we're definitely prepared just um, because we bring it every day in practice. Well, thank you so much. It was a blast to watch you guys tonight. Thank you. Thank you all.